All right, I'm here today to talk to you about why it might be a good time to buy in today's market, despite the rising interest rates, versus what it would have looked like to buy that exact same home six to eight months ago. Stay tuned. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you today about why you should consider buying in late 2022 and potentially even early 2023. So in this video, I <clears throat> break down what it might look like if you had bought a home in April, you know, 2022, in the peak of our market here in Canada, particularly my market in Nova Scotia. And what if you bought that same home at a lower cost because we are seeing a pullback in September. Now, difference in purchase price, also a difference in interest rates, which seems to be getting all of the attention. So you're going to see in this video, I break down everything and why I think it's actually a good time to buy right now, if you can afford to do so, because there are going to be some short term gains. So first off, this is our market. So going through Nova Scotia, you can see that we are looking at Halifax County, which is HRM, Halifax Regional Municipality, which makes up the largest portion of our population and gives us a good infographic of what we're looking at. And you can see the price points. We're looking at all price ranges, all property types, all bedrooms, all bathrooms. In April, we were just shy of 621000 April 2022, so $620,958. And in September... At the end of September, we were 522,856. So you can see that's quite a large price drop um, and you'll see the breakdown here in a second. But the point is, I wanna show the difference that getting a lower interest rate, but paying at a higher price versus a low purchase price at a higher interest rate temporarily may be the better option and one that I would implore people to explore. Um, so you can see here, we'll just use a ballpark number of 620,000 for purchase price in April 2022. And again, this is just in Halifax Regional Municipality. For those that aren't familiar, it is the capital of Nova Scotia and has the base of our population here in Nova Scotia, which is on the east coast of Canada. Um, but again, these numbers will probably be similar in a lot of other um, Canadian markets. Obviously, in the States, uh, there's going to be different price points and uh, the mortgage rates are different down there as well. And then again, September 2022, you can see that same home on average, these are average prices dropped uh, to 522%, which is roughly 19% um, purchase price. So you can see in the example that I'm going to use, um, we'll use a little bit easier numbers. Um, I did round up to a price difference of 20% um, just for simplicity's sake. So this should help explain things. So moving over, we're going to look at the mortgage payment calculator. This is just on Rate Hub, which is a great tool um, to use if you're looking to get a mortgage and get a little bit more information. Um, I've used specifically Halifax, Nova Scotia here. And in our first example, we're going to be looking at a purchase price of uh, $500,000. Now, this is not unreasonable. This is a pretty common number to see within the Halifax Dartmouth area for a single family home. Um, and, you know, is certainly a pretty average price here in this region. Um, so we are going to go for 5% down payment for both of these properties, which is the uh, minimum requirement here in Nova Scotia. Uh, and you can see we're looking at a 5.24% uh but we're actually going to change that because we want to reflect April 2022. The rates were around 2.99. Um, again, I pulled up the data and that's kind of where we were at in April. So 2.99% um, back in April versus what they are today. Uh, again, rates just went up. This video is going to come out a little bit later. There was another uh, hike, but just looking at uh, where they were at by end of September, uh, you will see that we'll be using the 5.24% uh, mark for purchases in September. So looking at April, buying a $500,000 home. And again, in this example, we're going to use the example that this is the same house you're buying, but just at different times in the year and different times in the market. So um, where these are average price numbers, it's a fair example to look at. So $500,000 home on a five-year fixed mortgage at 2.99% represents a payment of $2,335 a month. Um, you know, a lot of money. That's, uh, you know, a big chunk of change for sure. Um, but you'll see kind of how that offsets compared to if you were to buy that same home 
in September. Uh, one thing I really want to point out is the um, amortization schedule. So this is important to look. If you don't have one from your bank or your lender, uh, make sure to get an amortization schedule. It really helps you uh, kind of identify how much principal you're paying down and what you can expect at the time of renewal. So you can see here uh, at the end of this term, uh, you're going to have a balance of $422,163. So that's important to note. So after the five-year period is done on your five-year fixed mortgage that you got back in April, you're still going to have $422,000 at the end of all of this. So next, we're going to look at September. So we are going to move on. Just kidding. We are going to um, just finish off the remaining amortization amount, which after the five years um, is $422,000. Uh, there was some change there, but we'll use this just for a a round number. And again, we're going to do that same thing when we look at the home in um, September because it's really important right now uh, for a lot of people that are wondering to go fixed or variable or what the best uh, route to take is. Based off all of the uncertainty going on, uh, it's really important to think about what your next move looks like, whether it's a five-year mortgage or you do something shorter for two or three years to wait for interest rates to come back down. That's something to definitely uh, to keep in mind as we move forward. All right, so we're going to go to the other example, which again is a 20% reduction, which I know we brought up from the 19% from the previous stats I showed you in Halifax, um, but this is just the easier math for everyone to understand. So we're going to look at purchasing uh, in September, at the end of September, so in October, when interest rates were around 5.24% on a five-year fixed, uh, but your purchase price is only $400,000. So $100,000 less for that same home, yet your interest rate is uh, substantially higher. But I just want to show the breakdown and what that looks like. All right, so you can see here, price difference of only $18 a month because you're getting a higher interest rate, but your mortgage that you're taking out is $100,000 less essentially. So when you do 5% down, you have property mortgage insurance. Um, so I, I just used round numbers here. Uh, these aren't exact, but they're very, very close to the situation that um, you would be in in these two examples. So just keep that in mind as we go through here. Again, looking at amortization schedule, when this term is up at the end of the five years, the remaining balance is $351,000 and 87. Um, so you know, that's something to keep in mind as well. This is a massive difference um, between the two properties. So again, this would be the same home. You're just in one scenario buying it in April and the other you're buying it in uh, end of September, or essentially October. And there is, what's that? 70 something thousand dollars in the difference. So this is absolutely massive difference to just work with some short-term pain on your extra interest rate. So Again, this is using a five year in this example. Honestly, if I was, um, you know, in your shoes or if this was, you know, someone's situation that they're um, currently find themselves in, I would be looking at a short term mortgage, maybe something two, maybe three years uh, on a fixed product, ride the wave, and then you're going to be able to renew that mortgage, um, you know, at, at a lower rate. I don't know what they'll be. I don't know how far they'll come down, but I think in two or three years time, uh, we should see a reduction again. Uh, there's a good chance we're going to be in a recession. Uh, inflation should soon get under control. And then this is going to allow us to, uh, you know, move into that cycle where uh, we can start seeing some lower interest rates again. Um, so yeah, difference of $71,000. Um, looking at mortgage renewals. So if both of these were taken out on a five-year fixed, um, I know they're six months apart, but for simplicity's sake, we're both going to be looking at uh, 2027 uh, year renewals. So, um, you know, six months apart, there may be some mild interest changes there. Certainly not this severe fluctuation over a six month period that we're seeing now. Um, but, it, you know, in both of these examples, if you bought in April and you bought for 500,000, you'd have 422,000. If you bought in September, you'd only have $351,000. Again, for the same house, just being six months apart. And also keep in mind that, um, you know, these are higher interest rates that are scaring a lot of people off. And the reason that I'm doing this is because it provides an opportunity for us to look at things proactively and think about, is this a wise decision for me right now? Um, you know, to move forward, whether it's, you know, buying a home now, or do I wait longer, wait for interest rates to cool off? In my personal opinion, I think it's a good time to buy right now, as long as you can weather the storm. But again, in this example, if $18 a month extra 
is the storm. Okay, well, you know, maybe there's some different issues there. So looking at uh, mortgage renewal here. So 422,000, let's say they come back down to 3.49, which I think is reasonable um, to predict for kind of 2027. Again, I have no idea if that's gonna be accurate or not, but I think that's probably a fair estimate. Um, so looking at that, that gives us a mortgage payment at 3.49%, again, on a five-year fixed of $2,079 a month. Now, again, this is in 2027. Um, so that interest rate is pretty good. I think a lot of us would take 3.49% right now. But again, if you think back to COVID, you were getting sub 2%. Um, so I wanted to be realistic with what we're looking at. Again, now, same property except you bought in September. Again, time for renewal comes up. We're going to assume that the mortgage rates are the same for both renewal periods at 3.49%. We come down here and we find that our mortgage payment is now only 1826 instead. So not only are we getting a lot more value out of our property um, just by buying in September or October compared to April. We're also seeing a much larger gap in the mortgage payment amount. Okay, so already you can see that we have a equity difference of $71,000 just by buying that same home in September, October versus April. And now after living there for five years and you've renewed the mortgage, you've survived the storm of the higher interest rates, you also have a mortgage payment that is $349 less a month than the other property, which is the exact same property, you just bought it in April. So this is the, the reason why I try to explain to people, and obviously this is a lengthy video, I know it's dry, it's not exciting, uh, and I do apologize for that, but the reason I want to bring this to people's attention is it's difficult to explain in a, you know, 30 second conversation with potential buyers that are, you know, maybe scared about getting into this. And you can see how effective and impactful it can be when you're thinking about buying in this market. Um, so I really just want to hammer home the point that you're saving a ton on equity. You're saving 20000 almost $21,000 over the course of the five year term. Um, when it comes time to renewal. So again, whether math is your thing or not, this is just a really important point to hammer home. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate everyone. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for more content like this and happy house hunting. Cheers.